Hi, I'm CJ and this is my RC channel. So I am working on the wing, the lower wing, and I am going through the long, arduous, and tedious process of cutting all these pieces out and laying them all out. I highly recommend that you write the number of the parts down on the part. Just use pencil, write it down. It will make things so much easier because most of these parts, in fact, I would say very few of these parts have the laser engraved number on the part. And if you start splitting things up and moving things around, you're gonna have a nightmare trying to find the right piece for the right spot. I still say excellent kit, but it is a lot of work. I mean, you're building three separate wings. And just to give you an example, and this is A, one of the things that makes it a good kit, and B, one of the things that makes it a lot of work. Okay, you need W16 and 17. That's this piece. One piece is 16, the other 17. Comes off of this sheet. You have two pairs of these in varying sizes for the three wings. These are your spars. Now, as you can see, I am starting this one. First, cut out the spar. Don't try to snap these things out. It won't go well for you. Um, the laser cutting is good, but especially on the, uh, the thicker pieces of balsa, like this versus these, the laser doesn't always get fully through. So, so now, once you've got these two pieces out, you have to cut or at least get rid of all this uh, all these little inner pieces here that a make it lighter like these round uh, holes are just lightning holes and the uh, rectangular slots are uh, for the various ribs so one of these is going to get laid down as a bottom piece and the ribs are going to frame up on it and then you've got cutaways back here on the trailing end so everything notches together quite nicely and once you got everything cut out and everything ready to go the wings should build up you know quite mechanically and uh, you know there'll be a certain rhythm to it or at least you will you will know things are in the right place and that they are lined up correctly because everything has you know a little notch a little space things kind of key together uh, just like on the tail section, but a lot more complicated. And again, this is what makes it a good kit, and at the same time, makes it a lot of work. So, it's not complicated work, it's not rocket science, but uh, you want to be consistent and you want to take your time. So, you know, have a sharp blade. You know, if you go through a couple of blades, go through those blades, and just take your time. Go through these little parts. You know, if they need a little coaxing, coax them. You know, if you can just pop it out, pop it out. Um, but you also want to do this clear of your work area, unlike what I'm doing, because all this is just going to get in the way when you're assembling. So, and again, number the parts, because there's a lot of them. Uh, for example, these two pieces here, and then this third piece here, 24, 25, 26 are going to kind of box together, kind of like, uh, kind of like what we had on the landing gear wing, where we have this structure here. So we're going to see something similar here. This is the uh, mounting point for the uh, the wing, and I'm not sure the exact positioning on these. If I were to look here, it seems like this piece keys in here like that and it goes on the underside of the wing and then this piece goes above and that may be what this hole is that we're seeing it may not actually be uh, one of those doublers from earlier that I had mentioned don't know yet We'll see if I find something in the instructions for that. But what that is, is a hole to let the screw in 
the screw is gonna go against this piece of wood from below and anchor the wing against the fuselage so um, and then this is gonna box these two pieces together right here so it's not the same thing as that structure but similar in its own way here we have doublers just like we did on the other piece so as with the other ones you want to make very sure that you have things lined up correctly and I would recommend roughing up these inner surfaces before you glue them so you get uh, good adhesion and in the middle we have uh, two pairs of uh, well three pieces two doublers one for either side uh, this piece right here this rib with this cutout here these two pieces are going to sandwich that inner rib and leave a slot and that is going to be for the wing strut the outer wing strut to uh, drop down into there so take your time be organized lay everything out things will go much better I know people who loved taking big sheets like this and just breaking everything out. You know, I'm going to get all the parts cut out all at once. And then you're in hell. <laughs> do not do that with this kit. Another thing I would really highly recommend, and there's a couple times where I wish I had done it for reference myself. Lay all these sheets out on a table and take photos of them. Nice high detail photos that you can zoom in on and you can reference because if you don't mark pieces and you're not sure where something goes you can spot that piece on the sheet reference it by its unique shape and then you can you you can find the number so that would be a great help to have that that reference in absence of that take a few seconds as you're cutting things out use a pencil or a very fine marker and uh, write the numbers down on the majority of the parts. Some things like these little guys here, these are the same on all three wings. So I broke those out a while back and just put them all in one bag. And so when I need them, I just pull out a handful, lay them down, lay them down, done. But the rest of the parts are probably a little too uh, unique for each situation to be doing uh, that for a lot of things so um, you know if you just look at this there's a lot of unique numbered pairs here or or sets of four like we've got 38 38 39 39 40 40 42 other 42s over here 43 43 45s 46s 51s 49s, 52s were over here, uh, 48s, etc. And um, you know, I think you can see that if you broke these pieces out and threw away the scrap, you're throwing away your roadmap. So there are some things that I'm not sure about. Uh, for example, and this is something I've run into a couple of times where things that are pairs sometimes are not um they're they're not marked like you might have something that's uh w9 and w10 on the drawing and instead they just give you a bunch of w10s and there's no nines for example these w10s are a little doubler block that goes on here and that's gonna just provide some extra material for shaping the the corner um, of the wing here and in one of the drawings which I'm everything's a little spread out I'm not gonna try to find that now and hold it in front of the camera just take my word for there that there is a drawing that shows a W9 that looks just like this W10 part and a W10 one above the other over this piece in an exploded view 
I have not seen W9s. I'm going to look for W9s. If I don't find W9s, I'm going to wait on putting extra 10s because it may just be that they were using thinner balsa and then when they went to a thicker balsa for certain parts, they were just like, oh, we don't need to make 9s and 10s. We'll just make a thicker 10. I don't know. So in the event that I have just enough for the wings, and that could certainly be the case, because let's let's just go one level up. Okay, this is the first wing. Got uh, one here and one over here. So that's the the first pair. The next wing we have one here, one here. Okay, and the wing above that, the third wing, uh, the top wing, we have another pair, and we have one extra. Okay, go figure. So maybe there's another piece around here that I need to go back through and find more of these W10s. On the other hand. There may only be one for each corner. So I'm going to start with one. If I come across more, great. If not, I'm not going to use that image as a reference and then not have enough pieces when I get up later and got to cut them by hand. So uh, just little things. There's a lot of little tricks to this. And uh, I'm trying to put as much information out there. I'm sorry if so these videos get a little long, maybe even a little tedious, but for someone who's not an experienced modeler, uh, who's not, I mean, this is almost like putting a model together with foreign language directions. I, I almost did that today. I, I was picking up another, another two meter glider, uh, because just because, and ordered it out of Great Britain. Uh, they get uh, hyper flight dot co dot uk is their website hyperflight is a really nice company over in great britain they have a lot of different gliders that's kind of their main forte they have a few other types of airplanes some slope gliders uh, but mainly like f3 uh, f5 and that that realm of uh of thermal gliders thermal duration powered and unpowered a lot of wood gliders uh, a lot of rest class gliders. Um, and uh, so I was looking at one that I had been looking at previously, and it had been out of stock last year. And I was kind of torn between these two different planes. And I was about to order the one, and I looked, you know, just went through the description one more time, and I'm like, wait a second, it says... German manual and I downloaded the PDF and of course yes it's in German great okay so well, there's ways around that uh, because Google browser does a fair job of translating language so what I did was I took the PDF I opened it in Adobe after downloading it saved it as HTML opened the HTML file into a Google browser and then let Google run translate on it uh, and then save the web page again as a separate file. And that gave me a sort of English version. But as I was reading through the directions, not only was it a very, I would say, unnecessarily complicated build, um, it had no carbon fiber in the wings, no space. It, nothing in the spars and a lot of sheeting on the leading edge instead of having like a nice carbon fiber rod for the leading edge it's got like three different pieces of balsa with a fourth piece as a cap and a whole lot of sanding to be done and I was just like no 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 I, I love building but I hate tedious building especially hours of sanding trying to shape an airfoil by hand get it uniform across two meters of length uh, that is no fun in my opinion and uh, so I uh, backed that model out of the out of the sale and bought a different one that uses a, a carbon tube for the main spar all the way out end to end and it uses a carbon rod for the leading edge uh, it looks like a much quicker build. It's a beautiful little plane. 
and I thought I would go a little different on it in that I'm going to build it as a straight glider, but it has some parts for making it a powered glider if you want. So I'm going to do one of two different things. I'm either going to use their parts to make the stock fuselage powered, and then I've got some uh, carbon fiber um, tapered tubing, uh, like tail boom tu tubing, uh, and I'm going to build a second fuselage from scratch. And I'll show you how I do that. I'll show you how I design everything and, you know, figure everything out, decide what needs to be where. And uh, I will um, go that route, or I will make their fuselage as a straight glider fuselage and design my own power pod or powered fuselage. Uh, I'm not going to put a pod on it. I hate those. Um, I think they're a waste. I'd much rather just have a, uh, a nice spinner at the nose cone and a folding prop, much more aerodynamic. Um, so that's, that's where that project is going to end up. And uh, that'll happen over the next couple of months. I'm getting a lot of batteries at this point. I ordered the batteries for this, by the way. Uh, and I went online and found what the recommendation was for this kit. Um, I looked at a couple of different build layouts, uh, you know, different resellers of this airplane and found one where they listed the battery size, uh, recommended a uh, 1300 milliamp to 1500 milliamp, I believe, or maybe, uh, maybe it was 13 to 18 was the range. And uh, size, of course, is an issue too. So I measured the distance from the firewall to this bulkhead, because that's that's pretty much the battery space. You know, this is going to be a stop, and uh, also it'll stop up against the firewall. So anything bigger than this is not going to really fit. So I uh, I searched on uh, Hobby King, and one of the nice things about Hobby King's web website is they give you the option to search by certain measurements of things. Like if you need a servo that's a certain thickness, you can you know, drag a slider along and go, okay, I don't want this thing to be more than 11 millimeters in, th in width, you know, or it's not going to fit where you're trying to put it. And it'll, they'll show you all the options. So I searched for batteries that were 90 millimeters or less, because even though this is 95, there's this tab to get around. I didn't want to have to do too much acrobatics to get a battery in and out of here. So I set, I made 90 my, uh, my you know drop dead measurement and I found some 1400 milliamp batteries that were a uh, carbon graphene uh, it's a Turnigy battery the Panther series that are really nice they have a, uh, a discharge C rating of 75 with a max discharge of 150 C so that can put a lot of power uh, into the motor uh, if you need it. So, you know, because I want this thing to be able to perform. I mean, I, I have no um, illusions that I'm going to be doing, you know, like, you know, 3D acrobatics with this thing. That's a sure way to, to trash it. But it would be nice to be able to, you know, climb vertical and, you know, do rolls going up and, you know, pull nice tight loops and, you know, have the, the power on tap to do what you want. Fast takeoffs, you get in trouble, you know, hit the power and, and yank the thing away from, from the ground or trees or whatever. So, you know, that seemed to be the, uh, the way to go. They were only about $21 and some change each. So I picked up two. Usually I buy two batteries for whatever I'm building so I can you know, fly on one battery uh, while another battery charges and fly one battery and you've got a, a charged one waiting for you when the plane comes down. And uh, so even if you just do a couple of flights with it, uh, you, you don't even have to worry about charging at the field if you don't want to. If you just want to go do a couple of flights, you bring both batteries, off you go. Anyway, so um, interesting thing. Uh, I am was kind of forward thinking to this glider project, the powered glider, 
and it's a very narrow fuselage and I want to keep this as tight as possible. Uh, I don't want to have a big bulging uh, wooden fuselage to you know make space for um, a battery and uh, I'm going as small as I can on the motor while still having enough watts power wise uh, for it to be able to pull the glider. You know the gliders weigh in about 380 to 420 grams uh, not including motor and uh, flight battery. So if you're just doing regular servos as a glider, that's the, the range of weight that these gliders build out to. So, um, you know, I use that as my baseline plus, you know, weight of battery, uh, a little extra for the ESC, um, you know, about 15 grams for the ESC, uh, and then another 50 or so for the motor. And, you know, that gives you what your uh, tie end weight should be. And then you can figure out what wattage you need for the motor. And I decided to go with a different type of battery. And what I mean is a different uh, design purpose. It's not built as a normal flight battery. It's a, um, uh, what do they call it? Uh, Airsoft. It's for the uh, paintball guns. They're very long and they're narrow. They're not very wide, they're not very tall, and they got a good bit of length, and that's where they get their, um, you know, you've got to, you know, if you're, if you're trying to make a battery of a certain power output, there's gonna be a certain volume, and you're gonna pay for that volume in one direction or another, or all directions if it's just big and chunky. And since I want this glider to be, you know, narrow, and, you know, not very tall, not very wide, I needed to go long on the battery, and I was able to get uh, some batteries that are 1100, either 1100 or 1000 um, milliamps, which is going to be just fine for a powered glider. That's, that's going to be multiple up and down. Fire the motor, full throttle, take the glider up to a nice high altitude, shut it off. Glide it around till it gets down low, turn it on, back up you go, etc. Repeat and should get multiple flights out of that. I mean, for example, I'm only using 850 uh, milliamp hours for my uh, uh, the competition uh, F5J, which is a four meter glider. So, you know, that should do really nicely as far as, you know, the amount of flight time. And it uh, it works out about, I'm trying to remember the exact numbers, it's about 16 millimeters wide, uh, maybe 18 millimeters tall, and, 101 millimeters in length so it's almost like a long rectangle and that should make for a nice glider because I can always add a little length to the glider to make room for the battery and I'd much rather do that than make it fatter anyway I know I'm really going off topic here sorry about that but just kind of giving you an idea of some stuff that's coming down the road on the channel so I'm gonna continue cutting these parts out I'll start laying things up and I'll catch you up along the way. Okay, just wanna show you a couple little things that might be confusing. Um, okay, the placement of this uh, spar needs to be right here. Now it looks like the spar goes through to the outer edge, but it does not. Um, let's see, okay. Um, we have this piece and then the doubler, okay? And everything kind of backstops against this. So this piece is gonna go in here, in this notch like that, but it doesn't pass through. So you wanna start by pinning this spar down to your board like this. And the way I am doing this is to just basically create an X over the top of it, put in your pins at about a 45 degree angle. They don't penetrate the wood, they just anchor it down. And 
and then continue doing this and just use the uh, the circular spaces as anchor points and depending on how flat your plans are and how much they're trying to push this up you want to get this as flat as possible so use as many as you need and you just continue out that way now another thing that I want to show you is this little doubler here which is W55 there's two of them and they go right here you can see it in the plans right there and all this does is create a backstop for a piece of carbon fiber tubing that is going to pass through excuse me it's going to pass through uh, these two holes and this is the tube that's not a flat piece and so this little doubler provides a backstop for that piece of tubing okay um, let's see other little tricks oh yeah um, yes uh, W7s that's these pieces as you can see there's a bunch of W7s and those are little doublers that go here and another one goes here so you have two on each wing half so that's four for the bottom wing as you can see this is not glued in I'm just pinning stuff down right now that stuff will get glued bit by bit as I go okay um, so you want to cut those off now finding that W55 took me a minute because I looked through all the large pieces and I forgot I had uh, slipped these two pieces uh, into the uh, big plastic bag that everything comes in uh, so there's going to be a pair of these uh, like this for the other two wings where they uh, they join together these are going to be backstops for carbon fiber tubes at, at those locations uh, so the W55s are for the bottom wing uh, you can see the uh, the number right here it's hard to see right now because there's a little piece of plastic peeled up there um, but uh, this is where you find them and let's see anything else interesting um, oh yeah you'll notice that um, uh, this piece right here is uh, is forked at the end so this uh, end piece um, Oh, I can't see the number on it right now because it's covered uh, anyway you know what I'm talking about um, that is going to key into this end rib and it's very nice that they make the the ribs at the outsides even on the outer edge of the wing out of plywood and then do balsa throughout in the midsection uh, only using the plywood where it needs strength and that's definitely a, a you know potential weak spot on planes so you can't put this together in advance you have to first slide this over the notch in the wing and then then this piece comes in from the side into that fork so it's elevated off of the workspace slightly and that's just fine it's easy to work with because it's gonna key into that rib and the two of them together stand up quite nicely on their own once they are uh, they're fitted so once you put a couple pins in place and you get the uh, the rear trailing edge in place this should also be pinned down and I did uh, go through the wood on this because it's nice and wide again I recommend putting the pins at alternating angles so it presses them down um, they don't try to slide up if you put the pins straight down um, the wood could just rise up the pin whereas if you put the pins in at 
uh, competing angles, the uh, not only is it not going to move forward or backward, but it's not going to lift up off of the work surface either. So, as you can see, uh, this piece right here is, you know, it's slightly elevated. You can slide something. Well, you can't quite get under the edge. You can get under the edge here at the front, but as you can see, it's up off the ground because of the uh, that fork there. And again, that's as it should be. Um, so, so now I need to glue these doublers, um, and I'm going to do this uh, separately. I'm not going to do this while they're in place. Um, so I'm going to rough up these surfaces. I'm going to make sure I've got uh, all the pieces lined up. Um, I recommend doing it one since you're doing two sides. Do one side at a time. Get one side glued and then do the, uh, the second side. Uh, likewise with uh, this doubler. Um, rough that up. And uh, this piece with the, uh, the little backstop for the carbon, definitely rough this up. This is important that this doesn't pop off at some point. So go ahead and rough that up and uh, glue that doubler in place. Just uh, line up the top and bottom surfaces. Don't worry about the holes. They're not uh, concentric. It's just, a, if you look on the back side, you can see that it's not... Uh, center located to this one. It's I don't know why they put the hole there. Maybe just lightning. Um, I'm not going to save much weight, but make sure you've got the top and bottom edges uh, adjusted, and that you've got this notch properly open. That you're not like overlapping the notch or something like that. Uh, otherwise, it won't fit into place. So get it situated like that. Glue it and uh, onward, and you can glue it in place. Um, So, so that uh, that covers everything difficult or, or uh, surprising, uh, whatever, however you want to describe it, about this uh, this wing assembly. Uh, things that you need to look out for and um, do correctly. Okay, here's another thing that you're going to kind of want to account for. Uh, you need to be thinking about this as you're assembling this because it needs to go together. Um, each wing has three pieces of carbon fiber tubing. Uh, one long one, two short ones, and they can go together like this. Now, they are mentioned Here, they don't speak to quantity, but number one, it's obvious that the, uh, the long, thin one that goes into the other two is going to be the piece that goes in between them and provides support. Uh, the two shorter ones are going to be built into the wing structure uh, for these pieces to slide into. Now, uh, there are two sets of three that are the same. So uh, six by 37 is the inner one, and it's not exactly 37. You measure it, it's off by a couple millimeters. It's fine, everything fits. Um, just make sure that you've got the right ones. So you're gonna, they don't mention the quantity here, uh, which is kind of unfortunate. You only have one long one, that's the, uh, the three by 30, 77 millimeter and you have two 6 by 37s uh, and you have the same thing for the middle wing. The upper wing uses a longer set. The inner diameters are the same uh, but the lengths are different. So you have a single 3 by 98 millimeter and it's again not exactly 98 millimeters. It's a little shorter but you'll you'll know what you're seeing and then you have a pair of 6 by 50s Now, the reason you need to think about this as you're building is because you may not be able to put these in place once the wing is glued together. And here is why. If you look at this piece here, this is our 
uh, W56 and W55 that provides the uh, the inner wall for this. Um, that tube is going to sit in here. Okay. Likewise, on this side over here with the doubler, which I'll just use this for the moment as an example. Same thing. Um, when you line these up, you will notice that this hole here, the back side, uh, the outer side, is smaller than the inner one. That is so that this tube fits in here. It'll pass through the doubler, but it won't pass through the backstop. Now, once these two are glued into place, you're probably not going to be able to cram this thing in there without breaking it. So you want to be careful about how much glue you use. You really don't, I wouldn't glue this right away. I would strengthen it up afterwards, but I would put in this rib first, position this in place, cap it, and then glue this into this outer uh, wing rib into place. And that way this will be trapped or constrained in its proper position and you'll be good to go. And you'll have one of those over here as well. And then this piece is, of course, the joiner. So um, it's a nice solution. It's, it's clean, it works well. Um, uh, you know, once you realize what you're looking at, it makes total sense. And it's like, okay, that's how the wings join together, piece of cake. So keep that in mind. I don't know if there's any uh, dihedral uh, built into this. If it, there is, it's going to have to do with these two, the location of these two holes. And we can take a look at that right now. And as you can see, one hole is higher than the other. So there's our dihedral right there. Because these two holes are going to be at a slight angle as they go into the wing. So... It's going to be lower in the middle, which means the wing tip will be lifted slightly. So there's our dihedral. Very elegant, simple solution. And it's nothing that we can do to maul it up or destroy it unless we don't use the proper parts in the proper locations. So, you know, that's another reason to make sure you mark these because these two pieces are extremely similar in appearance and if you put the wrong one in the wrong place you're going to have a, a wing that doesn't have correct dihedral so make sure you number your parts and if you're not a thousand percent sure check the holes the hole that is lowest to your work surface is going to be the inner wall or inner uh, wing rib and the one that is located centrally is going to be the outer doubler so that when a, a tube is pushed in and that tube is horizontal or parallel to the ground that wing tip is going to be up slightly so simple I would just uh, keep these aside uh, go ahead and have these out because you're going to want to build these into the wing, but there's no need to just leave these loose and about. Um, you don't want to lose one or damage it, get glue on it, whatever, because then it's not going to fit into the wing rib, into the wing. So I hope uh, I hope this is helping you guys. I'm trying to give you. Every little bit of information, uh, any eccentricities or anything I see that is not 100% clear and obvious. So that when you guys do your builds on these, everything will go together all right. So I basically got the majority of the stuff pinned. 
I may not glue these little half ribs right away. These, of course, will get glued in when I cap off this spar, and that will happen after I glue these doublers up and position those ribs and glue them into place. I may wait on these until I'm about to do the leading edge, because then the leading edge itself, uh, along with the, uh, the spars, the top and bottom spars, will provide uh, positioning. So that way I don't have to try to you know, pin these down to the work surface and make sure that they are uh, level to the full size wing ribs. So just something to think about. You may uh, wing assembly continues. Got the doublers. Uh, got this area boxed in here. Um, definitely put these in as you assemble. You're not going to get them in afterwards. Um, you want to try to get a little bit of a, a lean angle on this uh, outer piece. They don't give you any guides. A lot of models will come with a a piece of wood uh, cut at an angle to uh, help you get your dihedral there um, so that when the two wing halves come together they fit better but uh, you're just gonna kinda have to guess at that it's not a lot of angle but it's definitely there uh, da, 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 da. let's see there was something else oh yeah um, don't try to put these in as you're going um, I've thought about this as I've been working and what I'm gonna do is now that I've got this built up this far I'm gonna cap this spar here get that glued into place and then once that's in place I'll try plugging these in uh, in this direction and see how they are lining up and if they are a little like nose high or something like that I might try pinning them down but it's going to be hard to get them level with the others so the best thing to do may be just to stick them in leave them unglued uh, and then put on the leading edge piece of carbon and at that point uh, actually glue these into the spar so uh, we'll see how that goes I'll try it with one and uh, let you know how it goes Okay, this is definitely the way that you want to do it. Set up the wing, leave these pieces off, uh, glue on your leading edge, and then all you need to do is take these half ribs, put them in at an angle like this, so you can get the front lined up, and then sl slowly slide it forward as you drop it into the notch back there I already did a couple of them you can pretty much just line them all up and then just drop of thin CA there a couple drops of thin C on e on either side let it wick along the seam you're set so that's what I'll be doing with the rest of these just to show you again hold it in at an angle get the front of it started Get it lined up on the slot at the rear. Oops, sorry, I'm trying to do this with my arms wrapped around a camera stand. Okay, I'm trying to make sure you can see what I'm doing too. So, put it in, in the, just get it in here, line the groove up on the carbon rod, and then slide it the tail end down into the spar okay and what now they'll stay there once you got them a bunch of them in or even all of them uh, just adjust them positionally as you want once you're happy with their alignment you can just drop a glue front couple drops at the back and they're all done nice and easy this way you don't end up with anything crooked you want to make sure that this leading edge is consistent and if you glue these on ahead of time when they're down here on the page you could conceivably get them at different angles especially if you did it without the top 
uh, spar cap on the upper half of the spar. So you could potentially, you know, do it this way once the top of the spar is glued in place. But even then, this could be off angle and uh, you could potentially pin them down and get a good result. I, I just think this works better. It's easier um, and you can do them all in a nice row and you don't have to worry uh, that this carbon fiber rod might be slightly deviated to try to mesh into the front notches of these various parts. It's, they're guaranteed to be in the right place, in the right orientation. This is what I recommend. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please click like and please subscribe to my channel. 